Hello, all my food service power plant friends. It's Jason Wange here in Denver, Colorado with your power plant positivity tip number 32, cultivate enthusiasm. There are many ways we work to grow as both people and professionals. We'll learn a new skill or we'll take a class in order to increase our value or our relevance. We'll study a new business model or we'll import a new formula into our lives that are both measurable and tangible. But one of the greatest ways to enjoy life more and to affect others positively is through something that's more of an intangible quality. It's enthusiasm. Walter Chrysler said, the real secret to success is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a unique skill to cultivate because it's so powerful and influential, but it's really hard to put a finger on just how to define it. It's that something that really can't be measured, but it can be so, so felt. It's that secret sauce that helps you push through towards a goal even when you're exhausted. It's that thing that helps you remain focused amidst all the life's distractions. Enthusiasm puts you in a positive state, which helps you tend to look for all the reasons why something can be done instead of a negative space where one tries to find all the reasons that they can't accomplish their goal. Brian Tracy said that sales is merely the transfer of enthusiasm. See, enthusiasm is that excitement and it's that passion which inspires others to get excited as well and either follow you or help you accomplish your goal. Did you realize that you can actually cultivate enthusiasm in yourself? If you are feeling lackluster or you are drained of energy or living in a general malaise, here are some ideas that you can use to help create a space where enthusiasm can grow for your benefit and the benefit of those around you. First, surround yourself with enthusiastic people. Remember, we become more like those we spend the most time with. So whether it's people you know in your life that you interact with or your their friends or people you work with, reach out to them. If it's people that you don't know, that's okay. People like Tony Robbins or Rachel Hollis or Brennan Burchard or Jack Canfield, go on YouTube and watch these people or listen to them in podcasts and just glean some of the energy. Remember, as you hang around people with more enthusiasm in life, your enthusiasm levels will rise to match theirs. Second, come up with your A-game pose. Amy Cuddy is a professor who has this fascinating TED Talk called Your Body Language May Shape Who You Are. And in it, she shares that oftentimes our body language reflects some of the sadness or fear or excitement and enthusiasm. And for people who have poor body language, maybe they slump or hunch, they're reflecting their internal anxieties or fear or malaise, but it's also going back and that body language is bringing them down even more. So her findings found that you can actually change your body language and come up with a few poses to affect your brain and your levels of preparation for success. You can do things like uh, put your head back and your chest out and put your hand on your hip. It creates more of a dominant position or, you know, head back, arch, arch back as well. And you've got your arms in the V formation showing that you are prepared to win. And that will actually create different levels of hormones in your brain to prepare your body to win. So one of the things you can do is just come up with your A game pose. Anytime you're going into a meeting or a conversation to help you prepare for success and enthusiasm. The third thing you can do to cultivate enthusiasm in your life, find something that you're passionate about. It's way easier to cultivate enthusiasm in life when you already have something that you are inherently enthusiastic about without having to do any posing for. You see, what are you excited about? What brings you joy? What's that thing the last time that you couldn't fall asleep at night because you were just so stinking excited about it? Go do that. Pour, your, pour yourself into that, let it fill you. And then when you've got that feeling, I want you to think about different areas of your life and how you could recreate that feeling in those areas. So think about work or in your, your physical body or in relationships. The more you have to be enthusiastic about in all areas of life, the more it will become a part of just your general everyday living. And here's the fourth thing you can do. Cultivate enthusiasm by helping others. You know, we've all seen enthusiastic people, maybe in like infomercials and things like that, that have plenty of energy and seem to use that energy though, just to benefit themselves. They come across as salesy or they manipulate others by trying to offer something that is that feels hollow and insincere. 
your enthusiasm for life will only be received well by others when they know that you've got their best in mind. Serving and caring for others always lifts up the spirit and increases your relevance and people's ability to trust you. I hope you're doing well. Remember, you've got this. We've got it together. Have a great day.